Greetings friends, Stephen Easterbrook here, a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are getting close to Christmas. So I'm going to read from Luke chapter 2 verse 1 to 7 and John chapter 14 verses 1 to 17. Uh, let's read our passage for today. Uh, that is from Luke verses 1 to 7. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius, the governor of Syria, and all those went to regist be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, of the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. John chapter 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to me. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known the, my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. It is enough for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long? And you still do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, do not, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does and does his works. Believe me, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else, believe on the account of the works themselves. Truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do, which means more works, not bigger works, um, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, and the Father will be glorified through the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it, according to his word. Amazing. So we're, like I said, we're a week before Christmas, it's so close, and it's here. Children are counting down the days, staying up late, waiting for the day. Presents, all that sort of thing. Excitement. But there is a darker side to Christmas as well, where people, many folks, are experiencing great loneliness, depression, and uh, without family or even a place to rest their head. Um, that's the, side, the sad side of Christmas when people are enjoying themselves with masses of food, there are people who have nothing. And uh, it would benefit with much hospitality and prayer and friendship of the, of the church and those in the church family, which is Christian people who just care about people. But how on earth is that possible? How on earth is it possible for this to happen? It's almost, you know, a struggle and evil is in the world and it seems insurmountable. So what do you do to its logical extreme? This is why the gospel of Jesus Christ is not about wishful thinking. It's not about blind faith. It's in the real world. It's practical. It's active. It's not blind and ignorant of life's struggles. Because in Hebrews, the writer states that Jesus is the, is the high priest the go-between between us and the Father, something we once called, once we could not do, 
it going further because the high priest could not empathize with us. He could not meet us halfway in the respect of what we're going through. He was detached. But Jesus being man and God, he does. He does. He was tempted and he stood the test. He, and he calls us to draw near to him, to know grace like no other and receive mercy from him in our time of need. That's a very important thing to remember at our time of need. What is this need? Understanding this and knowing that we have a need is vital. What is this ultimate need? Well, we are all in sin. And in fact, we are dead to God. That means we are not alive to him. And that means that we need to be made alive to God. We, otherwise, we're all condemned because that's what it is. Death is condemned. And we will be dead for eternity. So we need a perfect mediator. We need a perfect high priest. We need a high priest who's able to understand us and what we go through. Who's able to empathize. Who knows you because he is one of you and me. One of us. But he can't just be one of us. He has to be God as well to be able to do both sides of, of the job. And that's where we come to the word Christmas. We use it. We think, oh, wonderful. It's about getting presents. What does Christmas mean? The word Christ means anointed. It means, it means king. It means chosen. And mass is also part of the Latin side of it. It means to be among us with us, massing, uh, incarnate, becoming amongst us. So the purpose of Christ's massing, his being with us, is to save us from our sin into his kingdom, to make us from being dead to being alive with him. That's the thing, with him, massing. And he does this by dying on the cross for us to make that completion and then he is raised from the dead in which all those who believe in him are raised also at that at the final resurrection that's the glory of our lord jesus christ a little while back a little while back we had a very interesting bible study from john chapter 14 a couple of weeks back. And it begins with these very comforting words. Let not your hearts be troubled, because he's speaking to his apostles in the upper room. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Which is really wonderful. But verse 2, he starts talking about preparing rooms. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? So he goes to prepare a room for those who are his, those who are believing, who remain in him. He doesn't go and prepare estates. He doesn't go to prepare castles, uh, farms, fields or forests, uh, oceans. What's with the room idea? Well, if we go back to the passage that we read at the beginning uh, in Luke chapter 2, where Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem for the census, and they were turned away. They didn't have a room for Jesus. Even when he was a baby, there was no room. He ended up in a cave or a stable where animals were kept, farm animals, and he was laid in a feeding trough, basically. A cave and later in Jesus life he had to say foxes have holes but the son of man doesn't have a place to lay his head do you see what Christ promises when you trust him he says a servant isn't greater than his master and he calls you his friends but if they do evil to Christ what will they do to you you follow him. I will call this friend. 
What room is really yours in this life that you can take with you, that you can say is secure for eternity, that you can live there? What treasure really remains? Ask yourself. The shepherds, the shepherds abandoned all to go and see Jesus. The wise men traveled from the, from the east because they knew they were coming to see Jesus and they did not go back and rat out Jesus to King Herod. Treasure, real treasure. But the guys who didn't let Jesus in, they chose money out of compassion. No compassion there. Now coming to a close, this isn't a long talk today, but if you feel alone and you're a believer, that means you constantly are believing in the Lord Jesus. He has a place for you this Christmas and forever. You don't have to die though to receive it. You don't have to die to have joy about it and in its certainty for you. You don't have to. It is a treasure that no one can, can take from you. It is a treasure that you cannot lose. Even, it cannot be stolen from you and you can't lose it yourself because it's in God's hands. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe, and that word believe in God is believe also in me is an ongoing thing. That means you're remaining, like in chapter 15. You are remaining. Many people have these religious programs. How do you know the way? Religious programs do this, do that, do this, do that. Is that how, is that the way that you believe? Forget those religious things. Forget, forget all those things. This is how. Believe. Go on believing in God, in Jesus, in what he's done and what he promises for you. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And the only way, no other God, no other philosophy, no happy thoughts that, that people can invent for their, for their spirituality. And as soon as you read about Jesus, you know more about the Father and vice versa. Here in the Word. And as you hold on to the promise of that room, Remember, it's through Jesus, and it's in Jesus, and you'll be with him. He's the treasure. The room is, is that safe place that you cannot have here in this life, in this world. But in Christ, it's already yours. You don't have to go anywhere to get it. It's already yours. And... If you're not a believer and you hear the call of the Lord and he says, come, in my father's house are many rooms. I, I prepare a place for you. Well, believe in God. Believe also in Jesus. Then that room is yours. You can go in and out as much as you like, I'm sure. He'll prepare a place for you too. He, he has a place for all believers in his kingdom. And we'll all give glory to the Lord God of hosts, the Lord who is masked with us and now has ascended on high and we have the Holy Spirit masked in each of us who believe. Isn't that glorious? Now, at the end of this passage, 
he says something very important. He says, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in verse 12, in me, going on believing, will also do the works I do. And greater works than these will he do. Because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Now, people have often said that they're going to do better things than Jesus. That's not the right thing. The word is megas. It means more. So we'll do more things because why? Jesus was here for doing ministry for three years. And you, being a believer, may be doing ministry for 10 years. Which means if you're following Christ and preaching the gospel, you'll be doing more work because of the Holy Spirit. That's what he means. So, knowing that you have a place in eternity, believe and go on believing. And in so believing, win people for Christ through the Holy Spirit. It is his work and he is using us to be a part of it. Isn't that glorious? And that's where I'm going to stop today. Let's, let's pray. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our Lord. We thank you that you have raised uh, from the dead and into eternal life and that you are mediating for us. We do ask, Lord, that you would help us in whatever way we can help people who are struggling and that you would um, that you'd lead us in every way to look forward to you and uh, helping others to see you and to love you more. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. God bless you, my dear friends. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.